So to finish this session, we're going to have a 10-minute presentation paper um, from Jean-Paul Tassi from Italy. He's going to talk about groin pain associated with lower lumbar disc herniation and his experience with 129 patients treated by laser decompression. Thank you. Thank you. Is for one or yeah. slide? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Thank you, Dr. Wei. Thank you to you all. And thank you to the hospital staff for this wonderful conference. I want to speak about to you on growing pain associated with lower lumbar disc herniation and my experience on the treatment with percutaneous laser disc decompression on 129 patients. Um, this is study as you can see in this slide, I want to stress two points. A, patients with lower lumbar L4, L5, L5, S1 disc herniation sometimes report groin pain, but little mention has been made regarding the clinical feature of groin pain stemmed for lower lumbar disc herniation or perhaps until now, and the physicians may potentially fall in this leading diagnosis. The second point is that I want to point out that is that the percutaneous laser disc decompression, named also PLDD, is a safe, effective, and truly minimally invasive intervention, not surgical disc procedure in careful selected cases affected by this care. Even in patients experiencing growing pain due to lower lumbar disc or operates. This we can we can see the three most important pub scientific, scientific publications, the fifth, the third about the physio neurological physiology, and B, the second, the large experience in multicenter study from uh, Professor Choi that was my preceptor and inventor of PLDD from New York City in Columbia University. Mine, Professor, Johannes Hellinger and his son from Munich, Germany, and San Goli from Seoul, Korea, that is very giant spine surgeon now. Uh, the anatomic and physiological basis of local referred and radiating lumbar circle pain syndromes. Many efferent fibers from the middle and posterior structures of the spinal column project immediately to the paraspinal sympathetic ganglia that through the ascending sympathetic chain transmit the nervous impulses to the central nervous system. We can see in the next slide a picture that uh, explains very well this uh, mechanism. So we have that the tissue innervated by sympathetic fibers include the longitudinal ligaments, the most peripheral lamina of the annulus fibrosus and other spinal structure, for example, periosteum of the vertebral body, but also artery vein in the per peridural space of the anterior part of the spinal canal. And so we have that the ascending sympathetic chain, the autonomic system, receives this posterior afferent inflow at L2 level. Here is well explained. So, this afferent sensory fibers, fibers go directly from the lower lumbar spine through the ascending autonomic system at L dual level. In fact, next slide, you, you know very well that the lumbar sacral head zone of peripheral, the L2, L2 referral zone is on groin region. This is the, the anterior view. This is the posterior view. So, the summary of, the, of, the, of this study, of the data of this study are that in my experience, total experience, is over 3,200 patients 
treated for lumbar disc herniation. Every other 200, more than 200 patients treated for cervical disc herniation. And of these two, more than 2,800 regarding L4, L5, L5, S1 disc. And patients of this with growing pain due to these two lower spaces are 129, that is 4.4%. The same is very similar, this percentage, to this uh, study of a Japan group that published on spine in 1997. Next slide. What is PLDD? I prefer to, to the position of the patient in a lateral rather than in a prone position, like someone, and uh, use local anesthesia. The X-ray CR fluoroscope is mandatory, it's, fu it's fundamental. And uh, I use a thin, very thin needle. Three, um, this is a mistake, uh, 20 gauche or 18 gauche. And uh, this thin needle entered the disc in the being safe, safe triangle and the tip reach the nucleus pulposus, that is the target. You see here in this schematic picture that the tip of the needle reach the nucleus pulposus, huh? or here. Uh, then into the needle I insert the optical fiber that is uh, 300 microns and uh, its tip, its tip the tip of the optical fiber overcross the tip of the needle for five, seven millimeters. Each last beam power, the time pause between each last beam power and total laser energy delivered are parameters that must be case by case in each patient. More, um, this is a very important step. There is an uh, individualized parameters. So some case, or L4, L5 case, an MRI on sagittal, axial, uh, L5, S1, sagittal, axial, and note these important notes. That patient with growing pain at higher mean age, lower rate of back pain, and uh, this is very most important, L4 disc were more likely to be involved than L4, L5, S1. And in the MRI, herniation tend to be more central, to be more central than, rather than lateral or far lateral. This is intraoperative, in, intra-PLDD X-ray, a case of L5, S1 in lateral view with the C harm fluoroscope. This is the same case, obviously, in anteroposterior view, and I use in this case a lot a paramedian estratical approach, because you know that L4, L5, S1 uh, approached by posterolateral via is more difficult for the iliac crest. So. It's useful to be skillful with this kind of approach, paramedian, extratical, this is the mistake here, uh, for L5, S1. And I use a particular projection with the C-arm fluoroscope that is named Gambara projection. The next slide is L4, L5 case, lateral view, anteroposterior view. I can go through the right side or the left side, it's the same, because the target is the nucleus, the center of the nucleus. So you go through left or right, always in, you, you enter the center of the nucleus. But most important is that you stay in the midline of the disc, not towards the superior end plate, and not towards the inferior end plate, but perfectly thin S. Uh, longitudinally and in axis of the disc. Uh, the results of my experience, the, the, the follow-up range from uh, 
10 months to 11 years with an average of six years. I have had 87% of selling the goods sold and uh, with the McNab criteria. And these uh, are good number for this kernel. No one has gold standard team for this kernel. No for open surgery, no endoscopic surgery. So if you have 80, 70% of this chelgurus with a needle, local anesthesia, optical fiber, 30 minutes, 30 minutes is good results. Six patients show their occurrences and no complication, while I have had three cases of dietitis in overall experience. And note that, this is important, that patients with no good result of PLD can undergo to open disc surgery according to the state of the art open technique. So the conclusion are challenging differential diagnosis in growing pain. Keep in mind that a disc hernia, low lumbar spine, L4, L5, L5, S1 could be the, care, the cause of the growing pain. So if the patient underwent an MRI, it's not bad. B, that the PLDD represents a safe, effective, and a truly minimal invasive disc procedure for selected cases of disc herniation. Uh, I hope to, to start also in Doha this, uh, my work. Uh, and uh, say my thanks to all the staff of the, of the hospital. If, if there is time, I have one minute of video that is interesting. What you want? Okay. It's the same for me. It's the same for me.